So, as I was sitting at my desk this morning, eating breakfast pizza at 10 o'clock, yes, it was cold, straight out of the fridge, I had a very disconcerting realization. You see, I knew I was gonna be filming this video today about different changes that happen in the rest of your body when you lose a limb, because there's actually a lot of them, many of which I never would've thought of before the leg chopping occurred for me, and then all of a sudden I thought, what about life expectancy? So obviously, immediately, I turned off the Curtis Conner video I was listening to, did some Googling, and realized, Life expectancy for amputees as a whole is in fact shorter, so that was a fun existential way to start the day. I feel like I'm kind of disappearing into the stairs. One second. Can you guys see the dog that's lurking above my head now? Come here, come say hi. This is my puppy, Sully. He's about seven months old. He's from the islands of Turks and Caicos. He has a very serious heart condition, and he's doing amazing. Hello there, my beautiful internet friends. After that hectic intro, let's talk a little bit about some of the unexpected changes that have taken place all throughout my body, head to toe, since I lost a leg. If you didn't know, before I actually lost my leg, I had a bum ankle for 14 years. I had lots of surgeries, lots of procedures. It always gave me trouble, and I thought, once I get rid of this, this being a part of my body, uh, I can finally be in alignment, right? Like they can make the prosthetic match me perfectly. My hips aren't gonna be messed up anymore. My neck probably won't hurt as much anymore because I won't be limping all the time and walking off balance. It's gonna be amazing. That was by far one of the most naive thoughts I think I ever had. Cause oh goodness, the polar opposite is true. But not only aches and pains and life expectancy, there are also a few other things that you might not think about that change and adjust and grow and shrink when your body loses a part of itself. So let's talk about that. But first we have a sponsor today that I'm very excited to introduce to you because I have been playing this game for like the past 48 hours. Thank you to Switchcraft for sponsoring today's video. Switchcraft is a story-driven match three game set in a mysterious academy of witches. Your best friend goes missing and gosh darn it, you want to find her. Along the way, you meet a cast of intriguing and diverse characters as you play through thousands of different levels, meaning you are literally never going to get bored with this game. Now you have probably played match three games before, but this is a unique take on them because as you play through it, you're unlocking new pieces of this magical, gripping graphic novel. As a choose-your-own-adventure story, your decisions dictate the outcome of the story. And honestly, my favorite thing as I'm playing through this game is the art style. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's just so pretty to look at. Download Switchcraft for free and unlock the magical mystery today. Thank you so much to Switchcraft for entertaining me and also sponsoring today's video. You can check them out in the link in the description down below. So you lose a limb, what happens to the rest of your body? Uh, it might not come as a shock to you that there are gonna be cascading impacts kind of head to toe. Starting off with something that's really obvious is the muscle tone changes. I noticed within like three or four weeks after amputation that this leg was getting freaking beefy because I was using it to walk around on crutches, I was hopping, I was maneuvering, and then came the balance, especially as I got further into my life as an amputee. I realized that I could balance on the left side of my body like nobody's business. Like I had my 80 pound German Shepherd jump up on me when my crutches were like a few feet away from me because I was balancing by the counter and I caught her just fine on one leg, got her safely back to the ground, no problem. For me, the ability to get up standing from the ground on one leg, doing pistol squats became kind of effortless because it was something that I had to do. Ignore the dog toys in the messy room. So for instance, I've fallen and I can't get up, psych or can I? Things like this became everyday and super easy for me, which I'm really grateful for. For me anyways, it was a skill that I had to learn, but sort of the dark side of that is, you know if you've ever worked with a personal trainer or gone to the gym, you're always encouraged to work out both sides of your body evenly because you don't wanna be lopsided. Uh, well, turns out if you're only using one side of your body primarily, especially while you're waiting for your prosthetic leg to be made, you get really lopsided. And even now years into exercise and working out, you know, working on this leg, let me show you the difference. Check that out. Look at that, look at this, this tiny little chicken thigh uh, compared to this beefy guy over here. It's very different. It's not just a visual or an aesthetic thing. The fact that one side of my body was supporting all of my weight, which it was not accustomed to, led to a lot. Uh, of pain, of lower back pain, of neck pain, of shoulder pain, of hip pain, of like foot pain, but that was really secondary to everything else I was feeling kind of through my spine. And to be totally honest with you, that is something that to this day I still deal with. I, I had lower back pain before that was kind of annoying, but there are some nights that I cannot sleep, I cannot get comfortable because of my lower back pain. And this especially became clear that once I got a prosthetic, prosthetists are absolutely amazing at making this work for you. Something that I realized at the end of the day, it's absolutely a science, but it's also an art. To make sure that your hips are aligned and that this new leg is the same size as your other leg, 
there isn't some highly sophisticated process. It's literally your prosthetist having you stand up, like feeling both of your hips, looking, watching you walk and saying, that looks good. Let me know if it feels bad after a couple weeks of walking that way. And so we've gotten to the place with my prosthetic where it feels as balanced as it can be, but the way that I walk on an ankle that doesn't bend, on a plastic foot that doesn't have flexion like a normal foot might have, it has an impact on the rest of my body and I definitely feel that primarily in my hips and my lower back and it kind of spreads way up through the rest of my body. So if I'm standing for a long time, if I'm walking a lot, the rest of my body gets really uncomfortable. And even if you have a perfect prosthetic fit, you're still gonna have problems. So obviously phantom pain is a side effect for the majority of amputees. Not everybody has it, I certainly do. I've talked about this at length in other videos, which I'll link down below if you are interested in phantom pain, but also stump pain. Like this part of my leg continues continues to have issues as it continues to change and shrink and some days it swells and some days it doesn't and sometimes my prosthetic rubs on it in weird ways and so it's it's always a little bit uncomfortable it's not painful every day some days it's awful some days I don't even notice it next big change that was mind-blowing to me was my energy needs as in like calorie needs went up so substantially, especially in like the first six months after amputation. In my mind, I thought, okay, I lost a portion of my body. So obviously I won't need to like eat as much to maintain my current weight. I'm not going to be as active as maybe I, I normally would be. So I'm sure what I'll need to exist will probably go down and good Lord, was I wrong? I remember one situation in particular, we were traveling, uh, we had like gone to see a castle. I'd walked around for maybe 20 minutes, using a walking crutch at the time on sort of uneven surfaces and we went to grab dinner. And I had an entire steak and potatoes meal, like everything, consumed the entire thing. By the time I got back to where we were staying, I like needed to be snacking again which had never happened to me in my life. I was hungry all the time. And I came to find out that actually your calorie needs don't generally go down when you lose a limb, they go up because the rest of your body is compensating for this. There's balance and coordination that goes into walking on a prosthesis that doesn't happen when you're walking with two meat legs. So it's kind of normalized now, but I definitely eat more than I used to before. And because you are expending more energy throughout the day to exist in the same way that an able-bodied person might as well, you're a lot more tired at least I was especially as I sort of made the first two years of a transition every physical thing you do requires more from you than it does from an able-bodied person okay I'm not sure if you could call this next thing like a body change but it definitely has changed how I use my body in the world postural changes like how I sit uh, I used to always sit I can't even do it now but you know like crisscross applesauce oh my god oh my god I'm doing it I didn't actually think I could still do this. It's, it's horribly uncomfortable, but apparently I still can. I used to sit like that all the time because it was really comfortable to me. Obviously can't do that anymore. And so like finding comfortable positions to sit, whether or not I have my prosthetic on, do change. Like at the end of the day, if I'm watching a movie, my leg is off. I can't cross my right leg over my left because it just flops over because there's nothing to keep it down because I don't have a foot anymore. Also, unfortunately, the longer you are an amputee, your risk of muscle contractures, specifically like in your knee, if you're a below the knee amputee, things like stress fractures in your uh, remaining foot, if you have one, because maybe you're hopping when you're not exactly supposed to, those risks definitely go up. I debated whether or not I was gonna, oh, I just spilled coffee, oh no, no, hold on. <laughs> Please hold. <laughs> Anyways, um. I debated whether or not I was gonna include this next part in the body changes video, right? Don't worry about it. But we tend to forget sometimes that our brain is very much a part of our body. There are huge mental changes that take place. Okay, so when I was originally filming, I forgot a very important piece of what I was trying to say here. You probably don't need me to tell you that Losing a limb has an impact on your mental health, right? Sometimes a, a difficult one. But there's actually something really cool that happens too for many people who experience limb loss or something similar. In a way, you're kind of forced to make this change, but you realize you become incredibly creative and incredibly resourceful. A little while ago, I made sort of a joke video about like why disabled people would survive the zombie apocalypse. And the points that I was bringing up, like resourcefulness, creativity, the fact that we already live in a world that isn't made for us and we make it work, gosh darn it, communication skills that are developed. As I was kind of being silly and listing these things, it really sank home for me that oftentimes it's honestly really true. Like I know so many other people who are amputees or disabled who absolutely blow my mind with their resilience, their strength, things and the ways that they think to adapt to the world. It's honestly beautiful to watch. And I'm not gonna give any power to like the amputation itself or developing those skills in anyone's life. But I will say that you are presented with so many opportunities to develop 
new character traits and gosh darn it, it could be really painful to get there. It's nothing to be romanticized. It's nothing to automatically be labeled as inspiring, but oftentimes people in these situations do develop some really cool skills, like being able to adapt to gosh darn almost anything. Okay, so now for the fun stuff, life expectancy. This is one I, I wasn't gonna talk about before I sort of had that realization this morning, but the reality is, is that the mortality rate for amputees is higher. Why though? Why would having a limb chopped off change how long you're gonna live? Cause I mean like, look at me living life. I can still do things, right? Well, the reality is it's a little bit more complicated. A lot of amputations take place because of vascular issues. A lot of amputations take place because of prior existing conditions, traumatic injuries. Even with congenital amputees, sometimes there are comorbidities. There are other conditions that can all feed into a higher mortality rate. The risk of complications, infections, blood clots, things like this, is all higher for us one-leggers or one-armers or no-leggers. I mean, whatever flavor of amputee you might find yourself as, there are definitely some more risks, but it also really comes down to the specific situations of your amputation. Does this mean that I'm gonna die sooner or that an amputee you know is gonna die sooner than someone else? Not necessarily, absolutely not. But overall, looking at amputees as a, a people group, yes, the mortality rate is higher. But here's the, the reason that I wanted to make this video. Though there are a lot of changes, a lot of additional pain or adjustments you need to make. Her bodies are so freaking cool. The fact that I was walking on a metal and plastic and carbon fiber thing attached to my body, that I was walking a few months after my most recent amputation is incredible. Like, did you know that if everything goes smoothly, if there aren't complications, you get fit for a prosthetic limb, usually six to eight weeks after losing a limb? The fact that your body can heal that quickly and adapt to movement again and figure out how to walk, like we are incredible. Human beings are absolutely incredible. And I think that like the balance, the way that our muscles all adapt throughout our bodies, I'm just like in awe. And I, I honestly do feel that in a small way, seeing how my body has adjusted to this major change has made me have a lot more respect for it and healed small pieces, there are still broken fragments, but small pieces of how I kind of view my own body image and seeing it way more as a gift and way less as an aesthetic thing to tweak for whatever gosh darn societal reason. Body image is a whole nother conversation for another time. But gosh darn it, our bodies are really cool. So the ways that our physical selves adapt after losing a limb is, yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. So some of those things really were a surprise to me as I adjust to life as an amputee. I'm curious how many of these things you're like, yeah, duh, that makes sense and how many you never thought of before let me know in the comment section down below i also do want to note that everyone as an amputee is a unique individual some people are experienced some of these things some people might not experience many of them every body and situation is different there are some similarities across amputees but we are not the same big thank you again to switchcraft for sponsoring today's video check them out at the link in the description it is honestly a really fun and relaxing game to play it's just so pretty i found myself playing it some mornings to kind of just chill and sort of get in this Zen mind state, mindset. That's the word I was looking for kind of before starting my day. So check it out. A huge thank you to all my patrons over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Thank you for your generosity and your support. And most importantly to you watching this video right now, thank you for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today. You could be anywhere else in the world doing anything else. And you chose to hang out with me and learn about this stuff for a few minutes. And I really appreciate that. I appreciate your time. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you and I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye guys. Have her from the sky, all about it, down the river, high tide.